Well, good morning. Good Saturday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's going to have a great day. Uh, my J JMU Dukes play today at 4 o'clock against Georgia Southern uh, with a chance to take first place in uh, the Sun Belt Conference. So go J JMU Dukes. You know, one of the things that I wish you could do um, more of, I, I played that little clip, okay? That clip was from the song, uh, the Alan, Alan Parsons Project, okay? I, maybe they were a one-hit wonder, but that's the only song of theirs that I can remember. But there's many times that there's music that, <clears throat> at least back in the day, that is very, very relevant to, you know, you, you can put yourself in situations, okay? You know, I, I've got some old Run DMC raps that were like really, you know, really big, you know. Uh, in, at least in mine, that I can look at it and you can kind of say, yeah, I wish things were like that. But this song right here, because I got thinking this morning as I was getting ready to do my morning video is, where do we go from here? And that song popped up back in my head. And I have to say, if you are a Cowboys fan right now, go, go look up Alan Parsons Project Games People Play and just listen to the song. The song is a great song. It is an incredible song. The words to this fit verbatim for the Dallas Cowboys right now. Let me just read the lyrics. I wish I could just play the song, but it'll be copyrighted. In fact, I can't believe I got away with seven seconds of it. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I did with just a little clip there. Where do we go from here now that all the children are growing up? And I, I think about myself because when we won Super Bowls, Michael was a child. And they've already grown up. How do we spend our lives? Should we be watching them on Sundays? If there's no one to lend us a hand. I don't want to live anymore. I don't want to stay. I ain't going to spend the rest of my life quietly fading away. If that ain't the Dallas Cowboys, bro. If that ain't the Dallas Cowboys. Games people play, you take it or you leave it. The things that they say aren't right. If I promise you the moon and the stars, would you believe it? Games people play in the middle of the night. That's Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones, we're, we're going all, we're going all in. There's nobody out there better at being the GM. You know, we signed our guys. We're going to go as far as Dak Prescott takes us. He is prom promising us the moon and the stars. And we believe him. It's really just a game he's been playing. Where do we go from here now that all the children are growing up? How do we spend our time knowing nobody gives us a damn? That's, that's it in a nutshell. Jerry Jones doesn't give a damn about our feelings. The only thing he gives a damn about is your money. And he wants you to give him your money and shut the F up. It's the game that's been played on us, people. It is truly not about winning Super Bowls. Because if, if Jerry Jones, it, it's one of two things at this point. It's one of two things. Either Jerry Jones believes that all of these non-moves or stupid-ass moves are ones that are going to lead to a Super Bowl. In which case he's senile, delusional, or just plain stupid. Right? If he honestly believed Zeke Elliott, who was, you know, making 1,500 yards, you know, a season running the football, but couldn't win a Super Bowl. But now, after having a 600-year, you know, stint, that him coming back is now how we're going to win the Super Bowl. That after seeing what a 3-5 and five team was... And then you brought in another receiver in Amari Cooper that ended up winning the division that he is looking at this and saying, all we need is C.D. Lamb. It's just stupid. It's just stupid. Then you don't know what the hell you're doing. Or it's just a game to sell hope to you 
and holding on to all the damn money. It's a game being played on us, people. It's a game being played on us. You know, the the worst part about this is we actually have some people that are there busting their ass players-wise. They're giving everything they can to try and win. At least I believe they are. But it's kind of like, I don't know if you've seen like on Instagram and stuff, uh, that you'll see like a guy or a lady, they're on the floor with the, with, with the toothbrush and, and, and they're scrubbing the floor. And, and the caption is, we're going to have a conversation after, you know, about blind plants or something, you know, <laughs> when I'm finished cleaning. So, you know, using that toothbrush to scrub the floor, it's going to take you a long time. It's not the right tool. And that's where we are with the Cowboys. We just don't have the tools to be able to compete. Now, I will say, when we get Micah Parsons back, if we get T-Law back, if we get Deron Bland back, if we get Carson back, if we get Eric Kendricks back out on the field, that we'll be a better team than we are right now. And I will say that, you know, through the course of maybe time, maybe Mike Zimmer's defense will stick and they'll get better at trying to perform it, that the team will get better. But the problem is, is, What this first six weeks have shown is the fatal flaw. You're the worst at running the football. You're the worst at stopping the run. And you have no depth. And in a 17-game season, and then hopefully three or four games more, you do not have the players, the depth, to be able to compete losing a player or two. Injuries happen. You have to bake that into the equation. And Jerry Jones is, we'll just get guys that have been out of the NFL for, you know, a couple of years because they're cheap. Or we'll get some USFL guys. You know, we'll get some guys that are over the hill and sign up to a one-year deal where they don't really have enough time to learn what we're trying to do. It's fine. And this game has been played on us since he fired Jimmy Johnson. Remember about a month ago or two, two months ago. We Every once in a while we'll create some storylines that are just amazing. Uh, Jerry Jones, I don't know if you know this, in a Clarence Hill Jr. article, who, Clarence Hill Jr., if we could please do a quick rundown, has been covering the Cowboys since... 1997. Okay, been there, done that. Uh, yeah. no, not a quick mathematist, but 27 years or so, almost three decades, depending upon how many people are talking about. He reported, this is not us making this up, this is actual reporting of Jerry Jones talking about being a general manager. I've done it all, Okay. So I have an inordinate amount of confidence that, fuck, if anybody can figure out how to get this shit done, I can figure out how to get it done, John said. I've been there every which way from Sunday. Mm -hmm. And have I busted my ass a bunch? A bunch. And there's nobody living that out cutting and out shooting that can give you a bunch of times they busted their ass. So hell no. There's nobody that could fucking come in here and do all the contracts and be a GM any better than I can. Now, Jerry, congrats on talking your shit. Yeah, that was unbelievable. Think about the decades and decades of the people and fans saying Jerry needs to get his hands out of the team's business. Ever since Jerry has started running things, we haven't been good. He got rid of Jimmy. He got rid of Jimmy. And then nobody's able to check Jerry. And Jerry's just got his little fingers and everything. He's making decisions. He's drafting from the yacht. He's cutting people. He's negotiating deals. He's calling plays sometimes. Shit, he will get out there and throw the ball himself if he wants to. That is what people say. That's why the Cowboys haven't been good. So if this is a new interview or if this is Clarence Hill Jr. writing about something that happened back in the day, it's like, shout Shout out to Jerry Jones just finally telling everybody, hey, eat shit. Yeah. Just want to let you know that. <laughs> AJ, how do you feel Basically, about it? And what do you shit. think uh, What do you think Jerry Jones is thinking about everything he's got going on with his current Cowboys team where there's a CD, Dak, allegedly there's conversations and they're close. CD within a million, Dak, maybe just going to play out a year. Then he got Mike, he got Mike McCarthy on the final year of his contract. There's a mm. lot going on. After hearing that from Jerry and knowing that's how he's thinking, what are your thoughts on the Cowboys situation? Uh, this honestly made me feel 
better about the Cowboys in their season, thinking, hey, if you're a Cowboys fan, you should love this because Jerry is pissed, I think, at the narrative like outside the building and what the, oh, you can't figure this out. you got to get these guys in camp, all of this situation. You, what's Dak going to do? Is he going to be gone after this year? I think Jerry feels really good about the team, honestly. I think that's why he's doing this. Now, I don't know when that, that interview took place. It's great to hear him wide open like that. But, yeah, I think – Jerry is very, very confident in his team, and he's probably pissed that other people aren't, I guess, outside of the building. Jeremy Fowler, uh, by way of an R.J. Ochoa, who also covers the Dallas Cowboys, I believe, for The Athletic, you know, basically d- did a full breakdown. Yeah, yeah. Whoa, this is this whoa. is it's a long one. This is the, this is a very long one, but it's basically talking about the you know the money difference between them and how everything is looking to play out. And it feels like the C.D. Lamb deal potentially close. <laughs> Dak deal, depending upon whether or not Dak wants to maybe hit free agency. There, there's just so much going on being speculated about. But I think where we've landed on this particular Monday is C.D. is going to get a deal done, mm-hmm. and Dak's potentially going to let it ride in a free agency because if he does that. After seeing what Kirk Cousins did, and maybe last he should have. Season, yeah. that money would be through the roof, D. Yeah, he should. Dak should reset the market. I don't see a, a situation where he does a, a renegotiation unless it's a long-term reset the market type of deal. Obviously, I don't understand the CD stuff, especially with Shefty saying it's a million apart a year, and obviously a million dollars is a lot of money. But I mean. Jerry's, yeah, you've been there, you've been doing it, you've won Super Bowls, but it's been a long time since you've really reached the expectations of the team. Now, a lot of these teams, their issues, they don't have the talent or they don't have the coaches or they don't have the the support or whatever from the ownership group. Cowboys have kind of had all of that. I know Greeny laid out how cheap they've been, but they've had rosters good enough to win 12, you know, 11 games damn near every year, it seems. So up until this point, they've been disappointed. So I want to see some changes. Great to see, you know, Jerry, you know, confident in his team or confident in himself and what he – but he can do with the team. And he's an owner, so he should feel that way. But you got to get these guys out there. You got to get them situated, especially being less than two weeks from the real thing, real bullets firing. I hope we all just start uh, talking like that, too. Yeah. yeah you know, I, I hope that just so, becomes sure. like a, a goal. Yeah, that is like a. So that, that was Jerry Jones. You remember, you'll remember not long ago, there ain't nobody better out there being GM. <sighs> yeah. Um, yeah. Here's here's an interesting one. I, I have I have gotten a lot of shit about my quarterback. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna fall on the sword for Dak Prescott. Okay, you call me a fanboy, a Dak. I don't give a rat's ass about what you say. But shout out to Outlaw on uh, Elon Musk on X. He re, he he ended up responding to one of these, replying to Outlaw uh, Cowboys NFL. Dax in his eighth year and looks like a rookie in the pocket. How many throws has he rushed and made the wrong read? The red zone turnovers have been solely on him. Yes, the defense is bad, but Dak hasn't picked up any points. He's been as bad as everyone else. The response to this. Dak has eight passing TDs and six interceptions in six games. And you look at that and say, well, that's not real good. Okay, it's not. I'll I'll agree with you. But he goes on to say, Mahomes has had six passing TDs and six interceptions in five games. Wait a minute. Last I checked, six TD passes is less than eight. Right? But six interceptions in five games is more than six in six games, isn't it? So Pat Mahomes has got a one-to-one ratio, TDs and passes. He goes on. So tell me, why are the Chiefs 5-0 and while the Cowboys are 3-3? and Could it possibly be that it takes a team effort to win games and that it's not all the quarterback to do every week? And herein lies the problem with the games that have been played on us is Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones will have you believe, well, we're only going to go as far as Dak Prescott takes us, which is true because that's all you're putting on the field. You pass up on the opportunities of getting a credible running game when you knew that the 14th rushing NFL team, which is what we were last year, wasn't enough to get you to the Super Bowl. And after the year before, you when you had Zeke and Tony Pollard, that rushed for about 2,000 yards collectively. 
that getting rid of Zeke and not getting another power back with just Tony Pollard wasn't the answer because we did drop in being able to run the football. You then acerbate it by saying, we'll get rid of Tony Pollard and we'll bring back an aging Zeke Elliott to get him to be able to do something, in which case he's not running the ball but three or four times a, a week. Instead of realizing that most teams are looking and saying, we need at least two credible receiving threats, you've gone through the whole sale job of us. You remember a couple weeks ago when Jerry was literally telling us, you know, I can't wait. When Brandy Cooks went out, I can't wait to hear. Yeah, I can't wait to see Fontroy. Fontroy out there. You know, he's got Des Bryant and he's got De Seriously? Has he gotten a catch? He's literally selling us on a six-round pick that's only playing because you're out of desperation. He's selling him to you and saying he's Des Bryant. Guys, Jerry Jones has played us. And I'm so happy that the fire the GM has been trending. We need to fire the GM. Well, we can't. He needs to fire the GM himself. And he needs to keep Stephen Jones away from this. We have, you know, you, you talk about we're wasting money with Dak Prescott. Okay, I hear what you're saying. But I'm looking at all the wasted money beyond Dak Prescott that's on the field that's not performing. Are you saying you got your $82 million out of Terrence Steele right now? Are you saying that Zach Martin right now, it, you know, with the extension he got last year, that you're getting that value right now? I don't. Are you looking and saying, CD, I I'm getting the value out of CD right now? Are you looking at the dead money hits where we got Michael Gallup and Zeke Elliott that are still on the books? Michael Gallup will be there for another $8 million next year. So when we talk, oh, how, how about Trey Lance? That $5 million. You would think that every, what bothers me is this, and Dak Prescott, he's made mistakes too. But like, I can't believe I'm agreeing with Dan Olowski, that nobody has set up their quarterback to fail more than the Dallas Cowboys. Nobody has. Tell me a single move that the Cowboys have done to get a different result on offense since from last year. Just one. One thing that you look at and say, ha, ha, there you go. That's going to be a game changer. You sign C.D. Lamb and, and literally Stephen Jones says, well, C.D. Lamb, he's got to get more touches. Any coach out there will tell you, you don't want to be one-dimensional. I get it that the big running back first round picks are not in vogue, but you have to have some kind of a running game. And the Cowboys right now are the worst at stopping the run, the worst at running the football, and the worst at separation. And that all goes back to the guy who's buying the groceries. So this doom and gloom, let me finish it off with a little bit of this. And, and so we, we commented on it briefly. The more times I listen to it, the more uncomfortable it becomes. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, he's obviously frustrated. And to lash out at them for asking very obvious questions is just ugly, frankly. So the issues that they're having, and, and when you do something like that, it seems to me to suggest that you regret some of the things that you didn't do. And rather than talking about the mistakes you made, you lash out at people and suggest that they should look up the rights that you did, yeah. which doesn't really make sense. Like we are where we are right now. No one is living off of what they have done in the past. Right now, the team is not properly constructed, which falls in his lap. Yeah, Jerry acted like a horse's ass for no reason, right? Like you're out there, listen, you did, they don't gotta be geniuses. Captain Obvious saw this thing coming, bro. Like it, it, it wasn't like, yeah. it wasn't hiding in the weeds, Jerry. We all said when Detroit runs in your house, they're gonna break it off in you because you ain't good enough. <laughs> and that's showing you. You didn't get a go, you didn't go. Had the Mike Ditka show on our, he was the You're coach right. of the Bears. I was working in Chicago. We had the coaches show. 
that dynamic of the team that has his own radio show exactly. like that. So Mike Ditka, what he couldn't do, he could threaten to not come on anymore, sure. but he couldn't threaten to fire you for asking the questions. Exactly. And that's the part of this that makes it so uncomfortable Amen. because the power dynamic is, it, it's, it, it's, I'm trying to use uh, uh, unprecedented. There is no other circumstance exactly. like this. Robert Kraft, uh, Woody Johnson, That's name right. and owner, doesn't have his own weekly show on the radio because he's not also the general manager. And so that dynamic doesn't exist anywhere else. And frankly, and, and I say this respectfully, and I'm sorry, Hawk, but I oh, just... Good, good thing. I, I have a lot of respect for Jerry Jones. I've said that a million times. Mm -hmm. That was beneath him. Absolutely. Like, 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 Mr. Jones, if you're watching this, that was beneath you. Like, that. that's... That, that that was um, a moment in which you appeared very small, and I don't think you're a small person, and I, I hope that in a moment of reflection, he is able to recognize that, and whatever rectifying it, it there is, he is able to do, because th that was a moment that was beneath a person of his stature, in my opinion. Go ahead, I mean, Hunter. the irony is, uh, of that exchange between those people, only one of those people have done their job well, and that is Jerry Jones, from a GM perspective. As an owner, to your point, he's great, but as a GM, he, he has sucks. not been good of recent. And any other GM would have been fired. And the reason why this conversation goes the way it does is because the moves that should have been made as a GM in the Dallas Cowboys should have been sponsored by Geico because they're so easy. And that comes to town, runs the ball down your throat. And it doesn't matter what you do anywhere else. If you can't stop the run, you will lose football games. Let's go even more recent because Amari Cooper just got traded to the Buffalo Bills. For what? A third round pick. Yeah. The Dallas Cowboys yeah. traded him away three years ago for a fifth round pick yeah. after acquiring him for a first round pick. Think right. about that. He is three years older. He is on a team that has not winning, and they still got more compensation in the middle they of the for. season yeah. than the Dallas Cowboys did three years ago when he was at his height in an offseason where every other receiver who got traded, number one, they got first round picks. Right. That is bad general managing, period, right? And so to feel like you are above being called out about that or even asked questions is the issue with the Dallas Cowboys as an organization. Here's the right thing. <clears throat> On some level, he is above that. He, he puts himself in yep. that position. No other owner is asked those questions. The reason Woody Johnson was answering questions yesterday was because it happened to be the owner's meetings. Right. So he's walking in the door and all the reporters are there in the and lobby Jerry of the hotel. But every week, Woody 82. Johnson, I'm just using him as an example because he's the guy who's been in the middle of all of the news lately. He doesn't have to sit there and answer questions every single week because the owner shouldn't do that. Right. That's just right. not, that's not part of the deal here. So this is where being the owner and being the general manager puts him in, puts his head in the mouth of the lion in a way right. that the owner really is not meant to be. Yeah, I think you, you after um, the firing of Robert Sala, you did a, a, a nice little uh, down barrel about what was going on in the history of the Jets. You could do the same thing about the Cowboys. And I think over a certain period of time, it's hard to point the finger anywhere else than the one person who is in charge of all of it. Like, there are organizations that have consistent success and the Cowboys have fallen into that. I think he's confronting that. That's why it's the lash out. When you are embarrassed and ashamed, you start swinging wildly at whoever's in front of you. So I don't think, I mean, I don't hold anything against the host, obviously, for doing their job. Yeah. But Jerry, I think and, he's embarrassed. And, and think about this. He, because we, we negotiated yeah. and we had a lot of respect for Jerry Jones and the way he and, and, and Nick and I have dealt with him a number of times. Let me make sure everyone knows what you're saying. Yeah. Because, you know, sometimes we assume people know things. Dominique and Jeff were the leadership, the leaders of the NFL Players Association during the collective bargaining sessions, during the lockout. And Jerry Jones was, of course, a, a prominent member Absolutely. of the owners among. So you have sat in small rooms and dealt with him one on one. Yeah. Multiple Me mechanism when you know you're getting beat up. That's number okay. one. You got to. We're, we're jumping gotta... from piece to piece on here. But it's safe to say that we're a mess and we, we have to have some change. If you're saying fire the coach, okay, I, I, I mean, I can get on board with that. But the reality is, is how do we know how Mike McCarthy could be if he were given the pieces? We looked at Dan Quinn and said, Dan Quinn sucks. We said he sucked. We ran his ass out of town because they said he couldn't do the job. Now, I still think that the commanders are a little bit overrated right now, but you can't argue and say, wow, seems like he took a downtrodden group of guys and has changed their arrow and they're going up. When he actually had 
the front office and the GM working to give him what he needed. We don't have that, people. We don't have that. Jerry and Stephen Jones have screwed the pooch over and over and over again. They don't use the tools that are available to them in free agency to supplement a team. They constantly believe that they're smarter than everybody else. We know how to evaluate talent. And now that shit's going downhill, they're pointing the fingers at everybody else. So now Will McClay, who... Thank God we got Will McClay because before M Will McClay became the head of scouting, the Cowboys were doing crazy shit, jumping up and down in the draft and screwing the pooch. So the things that you have seen that have been positive for the Cowboys, getting Will McClay and letting somebody who understands football handle it, you're not doing that because you still want the control of it. Bringing in more talent like you did with Amari Cooper, and that turned a 3-5 and five team around, we're not going to do that either. Yeah. Way to go, Cowboys. Way to go. I'll catch you guys later. We'll have our members chat uh, stream 5 o'clock Eastern. Where do we go from here, now that all of the children